Okay, before I get started, I'm just going to give um, a content warning. The presentation I'm about to give does deal with the topic of sexual assault. So today I'll be talking about some research that I did this summer on child marriage and statutory rape in the United States. My name is Kaya Van Roost, and this work was done in collaboration with Miranda Horn, and it was supervised by Professor Alyssa Koski. And we're all at McGill in the Department of Epidemiology, Biostats, and uh, Occupational Health. So in terms of some context for this project, um, we use the United Nations definition of child marriage. So that's just any marriage before the age of 18. The practice is recognized as a violation of human rights, and it's also a marker of gender inequality. We know that women who marry as children have poor sexual and reproductive health outcomes than their peers who marry at later ages, and they're also more likely to experience intimate partner violence. In the United States, the practice is legal in 46 states under varying conditions. It's ongoing. So from 2010 to 2014, an estimated 0.6% or 78,000 15 to 17 year olds living in the United States were married or had been married. And the drivers of the practice are poorly understood. Um, we know, we knew from investigative journalism on this topic, as well as anecdotal accounts, that at least some girls get married in an effort to avoid having their intimate partners charged with crimes related to statutory rape. So that could be a, put, a potential motivator. So statutory rape laws in the United States are established at the state level. And they're pretty variable across states, but broadly they criminalize sexual activity with persons below some specific age. And it's important to note that this is regardless of consent. So if you're under that, spe that specified age in the eyes of the law, you're deemed incapable of consenting to sexual activity. There are also marital exceptions to these laws that are sometimes present. And those are exceptions that, that basically state that partners in a married couple can't be charged with statutory rape. So the purpose of our study was to investigate whether the av avoidance of statutory rape charges could be um, a motivator of child marriage. So how frequently could it motivate the practice? And we basically sought to quantify that motivation. So we estimated the number of child marriages in the United States that were either in violation of statutory rape laws or would have been in violation of those laws if there were no marital exceptions since the year 2000. So I'll get into how exactly we did this. We started by searching Westlaw, which is a legal database for relevant statutes and histories since the year 2000. So in particular, we were looking for sections of the state criminal codes that dealt with sex crimes. And we chose statutes that criminalized sexual intercourse based solely on the age of one or both of the parties. Um, those statutes were um, included in our state specific longitudinal law databases that we built. And then we took those laws that were included in the databases and we coded them. So we created a statistical code for each state and the crimes were coded as binary. So yes or no, was it a crime? We didn't include um, information on varying levels of severity for punishment, for example. So obviously to do this, we needed um, information on marital age. So that data was provided by vital statistics agencies that had access to marriage certificates and license data at the state level um, that contained information on the age of spouses. And we assumed married couples were sexually active, which allowed us to compare the age of spouses and their, the age difference between spouses with state specific statutory rape laws in specific years that we were looking at. So this is what we found. First of all, this is a map describing marital exceptions across the country. So in purple, we have states that have no marital exceptions to their statutory rape laws. In light blue, 
states that have marital exceptions to all statutory rape crimes. And you can see that's the majority of states. And then in this teal color, we have states that have marital exceptions to some, but not all statutory rape, statutory rape crimes. So how did this intersect with child marriage? First of all, we found child marriage, child marriages that occurred in all 44 states that we looked at and in the District of Columbia. Overall, we found that in 13 states, child, marriage, child marriages violated statutory rape laws. The proportion varied from less than 1% to more than half. In the other 31 states, we found some proportion of child marriages that would have been crimes if there were no marital exceptions in those states. And this proportion varied from less than 1% to more than 80%. So this huge variation is mostly due to differences in restrictiveness of statutory rape laws and the extent to which those laws overlapped with child marriages. I'll go through a few specific states now with kind of partial results tables to unpack these results a little bit more. So the first type of state um, that I'm going to present is illustrated by the case of South and North Dakota. So these are neighboring states, and they're actually both part of a group of 14 states where we found um, some child marriages that actually violated statutory rape laws at the time they occurred. So we have the years of data available, number of children married, and number of child marriages in each state. The difference between these two columns reflects the number of child marriages where both spouses were children. That's pretty rare. And then we have the number of marriages that met the definition of sex crimes under existing law. In these states, there's no marital exception, so we don't have any content in the last column. In North Dakota, we found 289 child marriages, of which 61 to 70% met the definition of a sex crime. In South Dakota, we found 783 child marriages, but only one less than 1% met the definition of a crime. So, um, oh, just to note also the range here, for example, in North Dakota, the reason for that is explained in the methods brief if anyone is, is wondering about that. Um, but the huge range between these two states really reflects the varying restrictiveness in the statutory rape laws between the two. So in North Dakota, the statutory rape law is much more restrictive. We found more crimes because of that. Next, we have states like Louisiana and New York. So these are states where some, but not all of the statutory rape uh, statutes include marital exceptions. So for example, in Louisiana, we found almost 5,000 child marriages. So 4,731 of which only four met the definition of a crime under existing law, so that's less than 1%, but between 854 and 1099 would have met the definition of a crime had there been no marital exception. In New York, um, which these numbers um, exclude data from New York City, we found 2,700 child marriages, of which 7 to 8% met the definition of a crime and about 8% would have met the definition of a crime without marital exceptions. So to unpack this a little bit, in Louisiana, first degree, first degree rape is defined as sex with any person under the age of 13, and there's no marital exception to that statute. We found four 12-year-olds that were married in the state over the period we examined, which violate that statute. So those are the four you see in the table. But all of the other Louisiana statutes that govern statutory rape, um, so for minors between the ages of 13 and 17, all of those statutes had marital exceptions. So all of those marriages would be in this last column. Finally, we have states like Idaho and Michigan where all of the statutory rape laws have marital exceptions. So no child marriages meet the definition of a crime. Still, we see vast variation in the proportion that would have met the definition of a crime absent these marital exceptions. So in Idaho, 
um, the proportion is 82, 83 to 87%, and in Michigan, less than 1%. Again, these differences reflect various levels of restrictiveness. So basically, um, some takeaways from this research for us is really the main thing is that our results highlight a, a blurred legal and conceptual boundary between child marriage and sexual violence in the United States. In addition, the simultaneous permissibility of child marriage coupled with marital exceptions to statutory rape provide legal loopholes for sexual acts with minors that would otherwise be punishable crimes. Finally, marital exceptions to statutory rape laws could be incentivizing a significant proportion of child marriages in some states. So we're hoping that this research informs policy debates in two kind of active policy arenas right now. The first um, illustrated by this bill on the left is kind of statutory rape policy. <clears throat> this is a bill from New Hampshire that was passed this summer and it removed marital exceptions from its statutory rape law, laws. On the right, we have a figure that I took from Unchained at, law, at Last, which is an NGO that is advocating for ending child marriage and forced marriage in the United States. And it just shows the different, um, all of the different kind of uh, policies that are pending in different states with regards to child marriage. Okay, thanks for listening and I'll leave the questions for discussion up here.